Gospel of November the 10th, 2016, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, the, king, the coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed. And no one will announce, look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is in you. Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say to you, Look, there he is, or look, there, here he is. Do not go off, do not run in pursuit, for just as lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to preach today about a word which I just come up in my reading, in my lexio, just a moment ago, while I was reading it in Greek, which I really hadn't paid attention. But that makes a lot of sense and explains a lot of things. The word is entos, which means inside, the inside. You might have noticed, if you are an avid reader of the Gospel, that I change the words. Normally our translation in English is, the kingdom of God is among you. Meaning, for several theologians, that because Jesus Christ is the beginning of the kingdom of God, and He is among them, there is no need for them, for anyone to say, the kingdom is coming, because He already is there. But comparing the word and toss with another chapter, chapter, I think it's 23 of Matthew, when the Lord is talking to the Pharisees about the cleaning of the vessels, and He says, you clean the vessels from the outside, but not the inside, because you're greedy. And it is obvious that precisely the kingdom of God is inside ourselves. Now it's very hard for many, for many of us, to swallow the fact that the kingdom of God would be inside even the Pharisees. But it wouldn't, shouldn't be so difficult for us to understand it, since according to uh, Saint Teresa of Avila, the king of heaven, that is Jesus the Lord, that's the way she, she understood it, is inside our soul, our soul resembling a castle of crystal. Inside, in the principal dwelling, is the Lord. And He does not leave that place even when we commit great sins. We might cover that beautiful castle in stinking and dark clothes, and not let the light of the Lord shine through. That is our, our, our conscience, our soul. But still the Lord is inside. And now, let us just dwell a little bit in this first part of the Gospel, which I am going to, to try to explain as best as I can. If the Kingdom is inside us, then everything makes a better fitting, a better sense. If you have heard the preaching that I use, that I usually preach about the sower, you will remember that I dare to say that it would seem that the sower is somewhat remiss. And I am fully aware that I am talking about and I am referring about the Lord God. So that is impossible. Which leads me to the next question. Why am I saying that? Well, if you see of the whole of the seed that he had to see, to sow, three forts were sown in a place where it would not produce anything. Some of it on the pathway, one quarter, Another, another part fell on the rocky place and another part where there were spines, where there were thorns. 
And humanly, I would ask the sower, Lord, how can you be so despised? So, so how can you not look where you're sowing? Oh, but that would be very foolish of me, of course, because the point is that he is sowing where he needs to sow, in our hearts, in our insights. But our hearts, our insights, and thoughts are defined by our will, by our will. So we can be pathway, we can be rocky stuff, we can be thorns, or we can be good, good soil, depending on our own will, our own free will. And that makes a lot of sense that then the kingdom of God is in the inside of us. And it will not force us to change the way we behave, the way we live. Because we remain absolutely free. Saint Paul wrote to one of his disciples, I think that it was Titus, if I am not mistaken, telling him, do not quell the Holy Spirit given to you. Do not drown him, do not sadden him. And that is the extraordinary power that we have within ourselves, that we can quell, that we can quench God himself. And he led us, he lets us. So today, once we have known that the kingdom is within us, what is there for us to behave or to ask? Shouldn't we really ask what the Virgin said and what the Lord taught us in the Our Father prayer? Thy will be done, thy kingdom come, in heaven as in earth as it is in heaven. What earth? My, my own self. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come, come from within. Help me to be transformed, to love you, and to diminish, to diminish my, my pridefulness, to diminish my haughtiness, to diminish my um, selfishness, to diminish my, my greed, and to let you grow more and more inside of me, so that I can end being more like Christ, more like the Son. Let us pray for each other, dear brothers, and for every one of the children of God throughout the world. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.